the gospel of the Lord. That's fine. This gospel that I've just shared, the prodigal son, the most popular of all of Jesus' parables. It has been called the greatest short story in all of Western literature. It is story, sermon, morality lesson, all combined. And there is no point in adding anything to it. It is only to put in action what the parable demands. To ask forgiveness, to grant forgiveness, and then to celebrate and rejoice. And today we have special reason to celebrate. Almost 100 years ago, this Newman Center, St. Thomas More, was founded, 1926. And in four years, God willing, we're still around, hopefully we will have a great celebration. But 50 years ago, a transforming event happened at this Newman Center. The Tucson, Domini the Tucson Bishop invited the Dominican priest to come and to be chaplains here. It was a serendipitous choice because St. Dominic is the patron of astronomers. Dominic is always painted, as Fra Angelico painted this picture in front of the altar, Dominic is always painted with a star at his head. And of course, the University of Arizona is the world center of astronomy. And we even have a couple of the Jesuit astronomers here this morning. And all the mountains that surround this city are crowned with observatories. Even the Vatican has a couple uh, observatories that the Jesuit priests have always staffed. Three of us here this morning, Sister Mary V, Sister Elizabeth, and myself, have been privileged to serve here as chaplains. I came here as director in 1980, and one of the first things that I did was to invite Dominican sisters to join us priests as chaplains. Most, most male religious orders are just that, men alone. But Dominicans have always been enriched over the centuries by including the wisdom of women. In fact, St. Dominic founded Dominican sisters before he founded Dominican priests. And so this center, St. Thomas More, has been enriched over the past several decades with the whole Dominican family. I served until 1987, and some of you here still remember those days. I love those years in this place so much that I chose to come back here and retire five years ago. The, that's fine. <laughs> The, though the 80s were remarkable in so many ways. Attending mass was still a common thing for most young people. But this chapel was especially noteworthy for the incredible Eucharistic celebrations. The music, the music so impressed me. Tom Booth came here as a freshman 40 years ago, and he's still, he's still leading music. He's leading music, and he's famous all over the world. He even sang for the Pope. Um, Nancy Sitkovich, many of you remember, people came just to listen to her singing. Um, 
and, and Jose Serrano, you were here in those days. And John, John Adams, you brought the pilgrim friars that filled this chapel many, many times. Um, in fact, every Christmas, the musicians would put on a special Christmas concert that would fill this chapel. In fact, um, I, I, the musicians at one point put out a CD about their music. And it's a joy, Nathan, to have you and your wife, Natalie, continue, continue that wonderful, wonderful music tradition right up to the present day. Jesus sang a song, and we three thank you for letting us continue that song in this very special and holy place.